Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Deep Dive into an Approximate Inductor Design Using Two Alternative Core. Please note that there are some relevant videos and here are the links and I'm going to print the links on the description page of the video that you are now watching. In this presentation I'm going to cover a, and show a detailed although approximate design of two inductors of same specification using two different ferrite cores with different cross-section area. I'm going to demonstrate that the required gaps are inversely proportional to the cross-section area and then I'm going to explore the differences between the two designs. Now please see the reference videos for the theoretical foundation of this uh, AP inductor design method that I'm using here without really de deriving all the equations. So I've chosen two cores which are applicable to a specific design and according to the AP design method that I'm going to cover in a minute are supposed to give us a design for same specification of an inductor. This is an E-core and this is a pot-core. Notice that in the case of the pot-core and E-core the width is about the same but here we have uh, 15, this is actually millimeters, okay it's not meters, while in the case of the pot-core it's, it's of course round so we have much more ferrite here. So the pot core has more ferrite than the E core and we'll see it in a minute. Looking at the data for these two cores, these are the two cores, this is the E core and this is the pot core. This is from Magnetics catalog. I see what is important at this point is that the cross section area of the core of one of them is 178 millimeter square and the other is 265 so there is quite a bit of a difference between them and this is actually uh, a purpose of this uh, presentation to see what happens if you have two cross-section areas. And then I have a very important uh, parameter here which is the AP which is the product of the cross-section area of the core and the winding area of the core and they are giving it a 3.55 and 3.68 which is very close and then according to the AP design method. If the AP is the same, then these two cores are applicable for same specifications and we are going to see that. Now from the fact that we have this AP here and the cross-section area, I can of course calculate the winding area for each one of them. Okay, so for the E core it's going to be 200 millimeter square and for the pot core it's 137 millimeter square. Now clearly since the AP is the same if the cross-section area of one of them is uh, smaller then therefore the window area is larger and we can already understand that we are going to have more copper here because the window area is the same, the current is going to be the same, the thickness of the wire is going to be the same so therefore, clearly in this particular case, we're going to have more terms, okay? We'll see it in a while. So now I'm using this AP equation. As I've said, I'm not developing it here. I'm taking it for granted. And in the videos that I've referenced, there is a derivation of this equation. So the AP, the product of the winding area times the cross-section area of the core is equal to the inductance I peak IRMS of the inductor and then the B peak that you like to have, J is the density, current density in the wire and K is the packing factor, that is how well can you pack the turns into the window. Now I've chosen here just a set, arbitrary set of specifications, so we'll have some numbers to work with, an inductance of 100 microhenry, B peak of 0.2 Tesla, I peak 14.5 and RMS of 12 amp, J 5 10 to the 6 amp per meter square which is 5 amp per millimeter okay and then we have here K.5 in case we like to have Leeds wire or something like that so I've sort of relaxed this uh, 
parameter. So from this, which of course I have set up to match the cores that I have specified, if I plug in these numbers into this equation, I am getting 3.510 to the minus 8 meter to the fourth, which is this 3.5 centimeter to the fourth, okay? Just uh, I'm keeping now the KMS dimension so that I'll be consistent here. So knowing the RMS current, the current density, I can calculate what is the wires cross-section area and I come up with 2.4 millimeter square, okay? So this is the wire that I need for the RMS current specified, 12 amp, with the current density that I have decided on. And of course, it, this has to do with the, the heating of the element. I'm not going into this, I'm just going into the basic design. I'm not going to uh, consider the qu question of temperature, etc. I'll talk about it a little bit later on. Now, it turns out, and you can see it in the reference video, that the number of turns required is L, the inductance times the peak current over the cross-section area, B max. And if I calculate it for the two cases, I find that for the E core, I need 41 turns. And for the pot core, I need 27 turns from this equation. I can go around and have here a sanity check. I know what is the number of turns that I've calculated. So let's see how much area do these wire need, these turns need, uh, per the cross-section area of the wire that I've calculated, okay? So this is the number of turns and this is the cross-section area of the wire. I multiply this, I get here 98 millimeter square. For the pot core, I'm getting 64 millimeter square of these two cores that, that I've seen earlier from the data sheet actually is 200 and 137. And as you can see, I have here an area which is twice the sort of nominal or theoretical copper area uh, without taking into account the, the packing. And I've specified 0.5 packing. And lo and behold, comes out to be exactly what I expect. This is like a miracle here. I'm always astonished how well does it fit, okay? So we know what is the number of turns. We know what is the cross-section area of the wire. And now let's go into the question of what is the gap that we need, okay? Now inductance is n square a e, which is the cross-section area mu sub zero permeability in vacuum or air and relative permeability. Relative permeability in a gapped core is about the magnetic path length, length over the air gap length, it's approximately. This is for, for high mu. And again, all this is given in the video that I've referenced. So I'm getting here uh, that L, just replacing the relative permeability with this, I'm getting this equation now, from which I can get the required gap length, okay? Which is this expression, I know everything here, number of term, cross-section area, mu sub zero, of course, and the inductance. And what I find is that for the E core, I need 3.7 millimeters, and for the pot core, I need 2.4 millimeters. So notice that the E core needs a different gap than the pot core. And this, as we will see, has to do with the cross-section area of the core. Okay? But as of now, we just found it from this relationship. So now, let's go into this issue of the gap volume and energy in the gap. So from the AE given, actually, for the core and LG that we've just calculated, I can find out that the volume of the air gap for the E core is 6.5 10 to the minus 7 and for the pot core it is, well, surprise, surprise, the same thing. 
Well, it's not a surprise. And the reason why it's not a surprise is that the most of the energy is in the air gap. Now the energy, ma magnetic energy, within the air is B max square over 2 mu. This is the magnetic energy density times the volume is the energy. Now we have same B max for the two cores. Okay, of course, same energy because this is the L and I square, and therefore we would expect that this will be exactly the same volume for the two cases. Now, since the cross area section of the E core is smaller, then the air gap length is going to be larger as we have found. Okay, so if I calculate the energy. From this equation, the volume b square over 2 mu, mu zero, I find 10 millijoule, and I've calculated the energy from li square over 2, I find the same thing. Amazing. I'm really always very surprised myself when I see this matching to theory, because this is the theory. The theory is that the magnetic energy is within the gap and the magnetic energy is B max over 2 mu zero and therefore uh, if you have two cores with same energy then uh, there will be this uh, matching here. Let's have a look now at some other aspect of these uh, two designs. We know that the relative permeability is the magnetic path length over the gap length we have the magnetic path length from the data sheet. Here it is. For the E core, it's 97 millimeter, and for the pot core, it's 68 millimeters approximately. So plugging in the magnetic path length and the gap length that we have already calculated, we find that the relative permeability for the E core is 26, and for the pot core is 28, pretty much close one to the other. Now, B is equal to mu times H, magnetic field. H is Ni over Le. So I can now calculate what will be the B max for each I max that I have specified. And the difference is the number of turns, of course, and the Le and mu E, they are different in the two designs. So if I plug in the numbers, then I find that the B max for the E core is 0.199. Remember that we have specified B max to be 0.2. And for the pot core, it's 0.201. So you see that this design brings in all the parameters to the right values while filling the two winding windows per the pecking coefficient that we have defined. Now what about the conduction losses? Well, conduction losses are first approximation due to the resistance of the wire and the, therefore the length of the total winding here and the length of the total winding here uh, will be of relevant. Here we have 41 turns, here we have here we have 24 turns, so less turns, but the path is larger here because this is only 15, this is again millimeters. So I'm leaving it as an exercise to you watching this video to calculate the losses here and here as a first approximation, just the resistance of the wire. Of course, I'm neglecting here or I'm not taking into account, I'm not going into the question of a skin effect, proximity effect, and other effects. Now the air gap that we got is pretty large and we know this is harmful because it's first of all radiating and then it is causing uh, losses uh, in the wires which will be close by. So the question is how can we reduce the length of the gap? Well, if you use the same AP but with the larger cross-section area, as we have seen, 
you will reduce the length. Okay, but this is quite limited, there's that much you can do. Of course, you can do an over design. Okay, you can spe specify a smaller B and a smaller K, and this will make the core larger than the optimal one, but then the gap will be smaller. And of course, you can go to other types of cores like uh, iron powder or distributed gap, which will reduce uh, the harmful effect of a large gap. So let me just summarize what we have seen, that AP is a very good measure of required core. The energy is stored in the air gap, and for a given B, the volume of the air gap is proportional to the energy stored, which means that the larger the AE, the smaller the gap length. And please note that uh, the illustrated design is the first order and a very approximate. Not included, as I've said, uh, losses uh, at skin effect, proximity effect, fringing, temperature rise, and many, many other things that you have to take into consideration when you build a uh, practical inductor. This is just the basic theoretical aspect of the design. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.